Welcome back, Mitochondria Access. Dr. Peebler from another episode of Cancer is a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. We're going to be talking today specifically about what happens when mitophagy goes wrong. In the last video, we talked in particular, what is mitophagy? How does the body initiate mitophagy? And in what situations? And under what stimuli? But today, we're going to be talking about what happens when mitophagy goes wrong, whether it be an insufficient amount of mitophagy or defective mitophagy or a pathologic excessive mitophagy. So the question is, how does impaired or insufficient mitophagy contribute to metabolic diseases? How does impaired or insufficient mitophagy contribute to cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration? How does impaired, insufficient, or excessive mitophagy relate to cancer? And how does mitophagy relate to the Warburg effect or Warburg physiology? We're going to try to answer and connect all those dots in this video, so stay tuned. So obviously we are in the micro series of mitochondrial dynamics. We've hit fission, we've hit fusion. We've talked a little about mitophagy from a very basic standpoint, but now we're gonna get into how mitophagy is related to disease in particular. As we age, part of the normal aging process, as we get a variety of environmental stimuli, negative and positive. Remember, mitochondria are our sixth sense. They're able to be our environmental sensors. And when we have a problematic environment or a problematic epigenetic situation, our mitochondria are going to be affected directly by this, and they're going to respond accordingly, and they're going to contribute to disease, or they're going to help inhibit disease. That could also include aberrant hormone production, such as hyperinsulinemia in a diabetic or obesity situation. That could include an elevated cortisol situation when you're under extreme amounts of stress or have circadian dysregulation. There are innumerable stimuli that are able to damage mitochondria in various ways, and we're going to talk about that in great detail over many videos when we're talking about mitochondrial redox in particular. So don't worry about the specific mechanisms and or stimuli. Just know that in general, as we age and as we are exposed to poor environment, our mitochondria are going to feel that they're going to be damaged and they're going to need robust functional mitochondrial quality control mechanisms in place for us to maintain our health. So when we have healthy mitochondrial quality control pathways, we, and this is in relation to neurons, but this is basically to all cells that use mitochondria, you're going to have neural function, neuroprotection, stress resistance, and homeostasis of whatever organ system, in this case, the brain. However, if you have impaired or insufficient mitochondrial quality control, some of that's fission, some of that's fusion, but in this case, we're talking about mitophagy, you're going to have neuronal damage, cell death, cognitive decline, which is the clinical manifestation and excessive brain aging. So remember, when we have healthy mitochondria, we're going to have a healthy amount of balance between the mitochondrial dynamics of vision and fusion. We're going to have proteases that break down the damaged dysfunctional old proteins. We're going to have vesicular transport from mitochondria to lysosomes to degrade those proteins. We're going to have an unfolded protein response, and we're going to have mitophagy. And this is a continuum of things that are happening as mitochondria become more damaged because we don't want to try to turn over excessive amount of mitochondria. If we can just get rid of some of the proteins without having to get rid of the entire mitochondria, that would be better from an energy standpoint. But if it's catastrophic damage that is irreversible or unable to be repaired, then mitophagy may be the only option the cell has at that point to maintain function. So mitophagy is seen as a key player in a variety of human diseases. And obviously this is a cancer as a mitochondrial metabolic disease video, and we're going to be focusing on cancer and how mitophagy is related to cancer, but it would be irresponsible of me to not show how mitophagy is related to several other disease processes. And that's what we're going to do before we hit cancer. Both defective and excessive mitophagy has been proposed to contribute to the age-related neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases, metabolic diseases, vascular complications of diabetes, myocardial or heart injury, muscular dystrophy, and liver diseases, among others. So as you can see, mitophagy is the guardian against excess of reactive oxygen species, against excessive mitochondrial DNA mutations or increasing heteroplasmy, release of DNA, because release of mitochondrial DNA is a signal to the cell, similar to cytochrome C, that there is really a lot of trouble in the cell, and they need to have apoptosis signals or Bergham cell death signals, decrease membrane potential, and decrease energy production. So mitophagy is the guardian against that, and when that goes awry, you can see that that's going to cause premature aging, neurodegeneration, cardiovascular disease, and of course, cancer. This is a really busy slide. And unfortunately, my head is actually <laughs> blocking some of the picture, but essentially it's showing all the different disease processes, whether it be neurodegeneration, lung diseases, such as pulmonary fibrosis, COPD, even acute lung injuries, alcoholic and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, skeletal muscle cancer, metabolic syndromes, et cetera. It's going to have a host of different disease processes, and it's going to show how mitophagy helps protect against that disease process. And I can link this into the description if you want to see this and study this. But 
needless to say, mitophagy is involved in almost all human disease because mitochondria are fundamental for almost every cell in the body. And if those mitochondria are not bioenergetically capable and are producing excessive reactive oxygen species, then we're not going to be able to maintain our health in that area of the body. And that's why mitochondrial heteroplasmy is so specific to certain organs. That's why you can have damage in kidneys and have a higher propensity of having kidney disease than someone who maybe has issues with their eyes or with their heart or vice versa, which makes, as Doug Wallace says, mitochondrial diseases are very heterogeneous. You can have healthy mitochondria in one part of your body and damaged mitochondria in the other part of the body. It's going to show up there. But ultimately, fundamentally, mitochondria are the key players in the contribution of that disease process. So I wanted to start out by showing that mitophagy is very important in a lot of the precancerous states since we're talking about cancer. So metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, diabetes, premature vascular aging and hypertension, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease caused by obesity and metabolic syndrome is now becoming the most common cause of cirrhosis these days. It used to be hepatitis C. You would think maybe alcohol is the biggest risk factor, but actually it's metabolic syndrome causing liver dysfunction, cirrhosis, which is a precancerous state for liver cancer, and hepatic failure. There's also several roles in heart and vascular diseases, such as coronary artery disease, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and pulmonary hypertension. And it's all related to dysfunctional mitophagy and those particular organs and tissues. Neurodegeneration is one of the most alarming and scary diseases for a lot of people, things like Alzheimer's and dementia. The rates of these diseases are increasing rapidly. And so knowing that autophagy slash mitophagy decreases drastically as we age, which leads to the toxic protein aggregates and neuronal cell death, which contributes to cognitive decline and essentially brain failure due to accumulation of damaged mitochondria, toxic protein aggregates, like I said, and ultimately which destroys the neurons or the cells responsible for brain function. And it's saying that multiple lines of evidence indicate that mitochondrial dysfunction is involved in the initiation and progression of Alzheimer's disease as essential machinery for mitochondrial quality control. Mitophagy plays a housekeeping role in neuronal cells by limiting dysfunctional and excessive mitochondria. At present, mounting evidence supports that the activity of mitophagy markedly declines in human brains during aging. Impaired mitophagy and mitochondrial dysfunction were causally linked to bioenergetic deficiencies, oxidative stress, microglial activation, and chronic inflammation, thereby aggravating the A, beta, and tau pathologies and leading to neuronal loss and Alzheimer's disease. So it's not just linked. It's not just associated. It is causal at this point that mitochondrial dysfunction through loss of mitophagy, mitochondrial specific autophagy is leading to Alzheimer's disease, is leading to Parkinson's disease, is leading to dementia. Although it's critical to understand this for cancer, obviously everyone is also at risk for these other diseases that no one wants. So it's important to know for a variety of conditions. So this is an interesting paper. It's called Mitophagy, Brenda Foe, and it's saying, although mitophagy induction mediates the elimination of damaged mitochondria and confers neuroprotection, uncontrolled runaway mitophagy could reduce mitochondrial content, overstressing the remaining organelles and eventually triggering neuronal cell death. So again, although mitophagy is critical to optimize, we do not want excessive mitophagy or autophagy because it can lead to problems that we don't want to have. And you'll see during cancer, this is actually one of the big problems. This is just a graphic of showing that when you have accumulation of damaged mitochondria due to inactive or insufficient mitophagy, you're going to have neurodegenerative diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, metabolic diseases, issues with mounting an immune response, premature aging. However, when you have optimization of mitophagy, adequate clearance of damaged mitochondria, then we're left with neuroprotection, protection from ischemic reperfusion injury, that's after a heart attack or stroke, tumor suppression or cancer prevention, normal metabolism, restraining of innate immunity, or the ability to mount a coordinated immune response and delaying of premature aging. And this list sounds like something that I want to be part of for sure. So when it comes to mitophagy and cancer, this is where the double-edged sword definitely becomes more apparent. We enter the gray zone. And so mitochondrial malfunction is involved in aging, metabolic diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, and cancer. Mitophagy, a selective autophagy of mitochondria, can efficiently degrade, remove, and recycle the malfunctioning or damaged mitochondria and is crucial for quality control. In past decades, numerous studies have identified serious of factors that regulate mitophagy and are involved in carcinogenesis, cancer cell migration, and death. So 
again, just like with mitochondrial dynamics, vision and fusion, mitochondrial specific autophagy, mitophagy is not as black and white in terms of how we should approach the subject when it comes to cancer. And you're going to see there are several nuances. So let's talk about prevention first. So as we can see, we have a normal cell. And when there's a normal amount of mitophagy going on, it's going to maintain a normal cell. However, when there's abnormal mitophagy, insufficient or defective mitophagy, then that's going to become an abnormal cell. It's going to lead to carcinogenesis or the transformation of a, an abnormal cell to a cancer cell at that point. And then autophagy becomes abnormal and it's actually no longer serving us in that cell population. Doesn't mean the other cells, the other normal cells that are not affected by cancer are not still benefited by autophagy or mitophagy. It's just that in a cancer situation, we may actually benefit from not having mitophagy happening because it can actually keep cancer cells protected and alive when we don't want them to be. So we see that when mitophagy is low, we rely less on oxidative phosphorylation or normal energy production from mitochondria. And when we have high levels of mitophagy, we have clearance of a normal mitochondria and we're able to make energy through oxidative phosphorylation like we want to be, like we should be. However, in certain cancers, we see that when we have excess HIF one alpha stabilization, and that can be from either hypoxia or pseudo hypoxia. If you remember back from the hypoxia inducible factor videos, I have, I believe three of them. You can go back and look at all the different ways that hypoxia inducible factor can be stabilized, which means that it's going to then actually produce excessive mitophagy, which is then going to reduce overall mitochondrial mass, which is going to make us then now rely on glycolysis because now we have no mitochondria left to do oxfos or to do oxidative phosphorylation. So this is a situation where when HIF-1-alpha is stabilized abnormally in the Warburg metabolism in cancer and under a hypoxic or pseudo-hypoxic state, we're going to have excess mitophagy, excess reduction in mitochondrial mass or reduction of overall mitochondria in the cell, which is going to have us actually rely on aerobic glycolysis or the Warburg effect because there's no way for the cell to even make energy through oxfos at that point. The other end of the spectrum is where you have a deficiency or an insufficiency in mitochondrial specific autophagy or mitophagy you have accumulation of dysfunctional mitochondria, which then sets us up with excessive ROS levels, which then on the back end stabilizes HIF, and it's going to lead us to the Warburg effect. So you can see that in both situations of the extremes, either excessive mitophagy or insufficient or lack of autophagy can lead us both to the same pathway, which is the Warburger effect in cancer, which is going to lead to the vicious cycles and the snowball effects that lead to the creation of the acidic tumor microenvironment and a feed forward mechanism that becomes out of control with growth and the ability to evade the immune system. So in conclusion, recent evidence has demonstrated that mitophagy is involved in the regulation of tumor genesis and tumor progression. Mitophagy modulation seems to be a promising approach to cancer treatment. However, in tumors, mitophagy appears to play a dual role in cancer progression. On one hand, mitophagy inhibits tumor progression by limiting ROS, basically protects the cancer cell from excessive ROS, just like it does when we have it under normal circumstances. While on the other hand, mitophagy can promote tumor growth, providing adaptation of tumor cells to the changing microenvironment. Excessive mitophagy in cancer cells may lead to mitophagic cell death. And at the same time, in several tumors, the inhibition of mitophagy resulted in suppression of tumor growth. So it's not clear cut how to approach this topic, unfortunately, at this day and age, at this time for cancer, unfortunately. We are in a gray area. Now, I have my biases about what I would say with this, but in terms of the evidence right now, there is no clear answer. So there is a relationship between mitophagy and metabolic reprogramming in cancer. So mitophagy dysfunction is an important mechanism of cancer energy metabolism reprogramming. So this is early on before cancer is actually initiated, and it's the actual initial metabolic reprogramming. And then it was reported that a specific P62 dependent mitophagy to selectively degrade exokinase 2 to control glycotic levels. In hepatocellular carcinoma, autophagy deficiency leads to an upregulation of hexokinase 2 expression. In addition, autophagy-related proteins can affect the glycolysis process, thereby inhibiting the occurrence and progression of cancer. So what is this saying? Well, I think it's probably best showed in a picture. So what happens is when we have excessive autophagy, that can lead to the Warburg effect because now there's no ability for the, the cell to run off of oxidative phosphorylation. However, when there is an insufficiency in mitophagy, which is probably the initiator of cancer, where you start to develop excessive mitochondrial DNA heteroplasmy, damaged mitochondria that are producing excessive reactive oxygen species because there's a lack of autophagy, that can actually contribute to the Warburg effect on the other side because mitophagy helps keep the Warburg metabolism enzymes, specifically hexokinase 2, which is part of the glycolysis pathway in check. So whenever you lose that 
pathway, whenever you lose or have insufficient mitophagy, then excess exokinase can build up, which leads to excess of glycolysis and ultimately the Warburg metabolism that we don't want to start to set up shop in any cell in our body. So truly mitophagy is at the crossroads of cancer development, exploring the role of mitophagy in tumor progression and therapy resistance. So perturbations in mitophagy pathways lead to suboptimal mitochondrial quality control. So this is before we have cancer, catalyzing various aspects of carcinogenesis. So this is helping set up the environment, the microenvironment for cancer to start to initiate, including establishment of metabolic plasticity, stemness, metabolic reconfiguration, metabolic reprogramming of cancer-associated fibroblasts, immunomodulation, while mitophagy performs a delicate balancing act at the intersection of cancer survival and cell death. Mounting evidence indicates that, particularly in the context of stress response induced by cancer therapy, it predominantly promotes survival. So this is probably the best slide to end on because it's going to help better understand what that's saying. Ultimately, when we have abnormal or insufficient mitophagy, when we have normal cells, it's going to lead to abnormal metabolism, which is going to set us up for developing cancer. Then what happens is mitophagy is then used by cancer cells to actually protect it and to drive cancer metabolism further by excessively removing mitochondria. And it also drives the reliance on glycolysis and the Warburg effect for its metabolism, which then becomes the vicious snowball. So our goal, the main goal, if you're looking for disease prevention, is to maximize mitophagy or optimize mitophagy so that we can keep a normal normal situation. Even at this point, at the abnormal cell point, we probably still have a chance to get back to a normal cell situation by recognizing that mitochondrial specific autophagy or mitophagy is an issue. And if you're able to change course, reverse mitochondrial heteroplasmy at this point, we probably can go back to the normal cell. However, once the cancer cell has been transformed, then the game changes. Then it becomes more nuanced and it becomes less clear about how to move forward from a mitophagy standpoint. Doesn't mean we don't know how to attack the problem from a metabolic standpoint using metabolic therapy. That's still probably the best option in this situation because if you cut off the fuel source to cancer, the glucose and glutamine, then it doesn't matter at that point. But in terms of disease prevention, this is where we get to focus trying to maintain normal cells by preserving normal mitophagy and optimizing mitophagy. I know that was a lot. I hope that was not too confusing. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I would love to try to answer those questions. If you have specific questions for us, you can email us, which is also in the description. And if you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe to our channel. It doesn't cost you a single thing. I love to see the subscriber count go up and knowing that we are reaching more and more people who need this information. If you have people that are struggling with disease processes, as you can see, if there's a host of disease processes that are related to mitophagy, mitochondrial dysfunction, and mitochondrial dynamics. Please share it with them. And until next time.